Before cooking, skim off any debris or skins that may have floated to the surface. Then drain and rinse well. Do not use the soaking liquid to cook the beans as it contains the indigestible sugars that contribute to gassiness. Add fresh, cold water to the beans. If you like, you can even use stock. Just make sure there is about twice the amount of liquid to beans. The beans need just enough liquid so they cook evenly. Any more than this is not necessary as it will only dilute the final flavor and color of both the beans and the liquid. During cooking, top up with more liquid to ensure the beans are fully covered. Adding aromatics to the simmering liquid will also contribute great flavor to the beans' starchy interior. Here again, you can add ingredients such as garlic, onions, and bay leaves. Or you can add additional aromatics and spices according to the flavors you are looking for. Some fat, especially olive oil, can also be added to the beans for added moisture and flavor. To cook the beans, first bring the liquid just to a boil. Then reduce the heat to a very gentle simmer. It is important that the liquid only simmers as boiling will break up the beans and split the skins. Slower and lower cooking will help maintain the integrity of the bean. When cooking on the stove top, a lid can be used to prevent the rapid evaporation of the liquid. However, do not cover completely so you can better control the heat and see what is happening inside. Skim the surface periodically to remove any foam and gently stir the beans from time to time to ensure they cook evenly and so they don't stick to the bottom. Now the big debate is when to add salt. If added at the beginning, the theory is that the salt will toughen the outer skin, slow the absorption of water, and increase the cooking time. Therefore, many people season only after the beans are fully cooked. However, this only seasons the beans topically and not internally. For this reason, we believe that the beans benefit from seasoning during cooking, so we season about halfway through, once the beans have started to soften. This gives the salt time to absorb into the starchy core of the beans. Adding about a half a teaspoon of salt per cup of dried beans is generally sufficient. Note, acids such as vinegar or tomatoes should generally be added near the end of cooking, as they significantly prolong the cooking time.